For many patients, RGP lenses can deliver better vision than soft lenses. They can also be cheaper, and for patients with a large toric prescription, an RGP may be the best option. Having a well-fitted RGP lens is vital. It's best to start with the K readings, which are the measurement of corneal curvature. It's a good idea to pick a lens design and then use the manufacturer's fitting guide, as each lens design comes with a prescribed fitting method which may differ between designs. If you don't have access to these, then as a general rule, fitting on the flattest K would be a good starting point. Software can help you fit lenses empirically without the patient in the consulting room by showing you a simulated fluorescein pattern. When fitting an RGP lens, the optimal lens diameter should be within 2 to 3 mm of the limbus. This will offer good comfort and stability. Let's start off with an optimally fitted RGP lens, otherwise known as an aligned RGP contact lens. As you can see, it's good to start off the assessment of an RGP lens using white light to look at the movement post blink. In this example, the lens stays within the limbus in all directions of gaze and has a nice smooth movement post blink. The lens shows a smooth recovery on push up and it's centered well. It's a good idea to lift the top lid to look at the centration of the lens. Some lenses can be lid attached, meaning the eyelid can drag the lens up, making the lens appear to be centered better than it actually is. Next, we should look at the fluorescein fitting pattern. It's good to divide the fit into three different zones assessing the center, the mid-periphery, and the edge. The central 7mm or so should exhibit a thin film of fluorescein, followed by a mid-peripheral area of light bearing, therefore thinning of the fluorescein pattern. The edge should show a bright ring of fluorescein where the lens lifts off the cornea, aiding in lens removal and tear exchange. In this video, you can see the fitting is far easier discerned using a rattan filter, which blocks out the reflected blue light to enhance the fluorescein pattern. The fitting of the lens shown here could be improved by reducing the edge lift, as the edge clearance is allowing bubbles to get under the lens post blink. This can be rectified with the manufacturer by asking for a reduced edge lift. Here we can see a steeply fitted contact lens. In this video we can see the lens is sitting slightly below center. The lens is moving, however the movement is much less than the alignment fitting of the previous video. If the lens were particularly steep, a large post-lens tear layer can create surface tension, which can fix the lens in position so it hardly moves at all. A steeply fitted contact lens can be relatively comfortable for the patient, particularly because of the reduced movement and reduced lid interaction of the edge of the contact lens. Vision can be relatively good. However, if you need more minus in the over-refraction than expected, this can also indicate a steeply fitted contact lens. The next two videos show an exaggerated steeply fitting fluorescein pattern. In the first video, we can see that the lens is centered relatively well. However, it shows a very bright area of central fluorescein pooling. The fluorescein centrally is so thick that it is obscuring the pupil margin detail. In the mid periphery, we can see a darker area in the fluorescein pattern, indicating heavy bearing on the mid peripheral cornea. The fluorescein ring around the edge is very thin, indicating a low edge clearance, typical of a steeply fitted contact lens. The second video here exhibits a very similar fitting pattern to the first, and it shows that with a very steeply fitted contact lens, bubbles can be introduced underneath the lens. These bubbles are introduced to the thick post-lens tear layer on insertion of a steep lens. Here we can see a large bubble centrally under the contact lens. And if you're not careful, you could misinterpret the dark area where the bubble is as central touch, leading you to think that this is a flat fit. It is in fact a very steep fit. So now we move on to a flat fitting RGP lens. Flat fitting RGP lenses tend to be very mobile, especially post blink and on lateral gaze. As you can see in this video, the centration is quite poor with an inferior fitting position. On lateral and upward gaze, we can see the lens crosses the limbus. This video also shows a classical sign of a flat fitting RGP contact lens. When the lens is pushed up, we can see a recovery of the lens in an arcuate movement from top to bottom. You would tend to expect a flat fitting lens to need more plus than expected on the over refraction. Here we can see the fluorescein pattern of a flat RGP contact lens. Again, we split the lens into three zones and consider the central zone first. We can see the fluorescein thins out centrally, so we're looking here at a lens bearing on the central apex of the cornea. Mid-peripherally, 
we can see an area of pooling where the lens is sitting away from the mid-peripheral cornea. We also have a thick ring of fluorescein around the edge, indicating excessive edge clearance. These lenses are very easily removed, and quite often the patients can find the lenses spontaneously flip out of the eye. It's important for the practitioner to control the amount of fluorescein being instilled. Front surface fluorescein can give a false impression of central fit. The optimal time to view the fitting pattern is between 20 seconds and 3 minutes after fluorescein is instilled, with the lens having settled for around 20 minutes. This skills guide is adapted from original content by Drew Thompson. You can find his full CPD video, Soft and RGP Contact Lens Fitting Pearls, in the OT Education Library. You can find links to this in the description, as well as links to our other contact lens fitting skills guides.